Recording has commenced. Um, so let me make you all small. For some reason, when the recording happens, people's like the chat window stays up on the even though it's on a different screen on my computer. I wonder how I don't know how to hide it. Maybe I'll just hide it like this so I can't see anybody. All right, so I officially I can't see anyone. So um, I'm trying to like keep the uh, the chat where the you know the video screens off of the recording um so if you have a question or comment please speak out say say something out loud you know interrupt me um i can't see um anything going on if you you know don't don't put it in the chat i can't see it pop or at least i'm not paying attention to it pop up so please just um say it out loud and this will be a participatory uh script so you you all are going to help me create it so <clears throat> what we are going to try to create together um is super simple and it's basically going to be a version of um what you all will do this weekend which is a very simple attractor point uh script so all we're all we want to do on this script is we want to create a grid of for you know for this for our purposes tonight we'll, a grid of circles and those circles will have a radii you know that is dependent upon the location of a point right so the attractor point the closer the the closer the point is to the um to a circle, the larger it is, the further the circle away, first further the circle is away, the smaller it is. Um, and so if we can create that, then if we get through that quickly, we can start to mess with it and show how you know might manipulate it into different different things. Um, so does anyone have an idea? So like I said, a, a grid of circles that have a radii that's dependent on the location of another point um, or of a single point. So I'll so that anybody have an idea of, of how, what we might need to do in Grasshopper to start that? Make you don't have to know how to do it in Grasshopper, <laughs> just like what is the first step to creating it? Sorry, I interrupted somebody. Um, we need to make a point, right? Okay, yep. First thing we can do is make a point. So like I said, for your assignment, the only thing you're allowed to have in, in Rhino is the point. So I will drop the point. Earl, do you know how to get that point into Grasshopper? Do you remember how to do that? Um, there's a, is there a command called point or is it called node? Nope, you're right. It was a, there's a command called point. So in this parameters tab, this first one, really the first, the first thing you can click is a point, right? So I can click on that and I can drag it in and uh, and it has an error. Does anybody want to know why it has an error? You need to select one point. I need to select a point, exactly. So if I right click on that, I can set one point. It brings me over to Rhino. I select said point. Now it's all gray. And if I select it, you can see I have a green X over where that point is. Perfect, so now I have the point. This is, you know, we can call this the attractor point if we wanted to. Um, we can rename it. And I know I always forget how to show. Boop, 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 boop. So there we go. So there is the attractor point. Um, I just, I renamed it by right clicking on it. I can rename it here. And I can um, either show the the symbol icon or the 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 text that I um, I name it with. So, all right. So we got our attractor point. So now, what's next? What you know? So we need to create the grid of circles. Does anybody have an idea of how we might in Grasshopper start to create that grid of circles? You first need a circle. Okay. So uh, you so you want to create a circle first, right? So if we 
go to curve, we have um, in our primitives, is it here? Yes, we have a bunch of circles. We have a circle defined by base plane and radius, circle defined by center, normal and radius, circle of tangent of two curves, three point circle, fit a circle around a collection of points, all kinds of ones. What one do you think would be best suited, uh, Michael, for this action? Uh, either the circle or circle CNR, I guess. What was the circle one again? Circle defined by a base plane and radius and circle CNR is create a circle defined by center, normal, and radius. I guess just a circle CNR. Correct. So we want to create a circle because we want to create a grid of circles, right? So we want to be able to say, and you, you also have to think like we need to eventually be able to say, well, what is actually, what are we, what distance are we measuring? You know, what is the attraction point? Like what, what points are we measuring between? So this circle here has, is defined by a center point, right? And it, it takes a point. So if I, even if I just plug this point into here and I zoom in, you'll see that it puts a, a circle around that point. Um, so this is, you know, definitely the tool, definitely the tool we want to use. But the thing we want to be able to do is to create a bunch of circles, right? We want to create a, a whole grid of them. Um, so does anybody have an idea uh, how we might create a grid of circles. Or, or what, do we, what do we need to do to create a bunch of, like what, what's the next thing we need to define to create a bunch of circles? Do we need to like instance it? Instance it. What do you, what do you mean by that? Um, I guess instancing would be like making a clone of it. Clone, like, oh, like making more than one of these? Yeah, but they're all based off the same, like the original circle. Okay. I don't know if Grasshopper can do that. Never mind. I mean, you can, you know, there are definitely copy tools and move tools and, and, um, but there is a little bit, uh, a little, potentially a little easier of a, a way, um, to uh, there's a few other ways to do it that I would I would recommend, but that you know that could be an option. Um, well, I'm not sure exactly how we would go about doing that at the moment, but so what? Anyone else have a thought? Could we array it? Or so, uh, like you want to create an array of circles? A box array that looks good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we could try this. This isn't how I was thinking of doing it. Um, so if this were the case, yeah, we can give this a go. We'll see, you know, we may go off the rails a little bit. This wasn't how I imagined it happening, but we can see we can see where it goes. So the first thing we would need to do then, or so this is this is arraying a geometry, right? So this this um, node is taking a you know a piece of geometry. Uh, Rectangular array cell, the x count. So how many in the x direction? How many in the y direction? Uh, so, six. so I guess if we were going to use this, we would have to take the point and make a circle from it first, so that we could select the circle. Sure. So right. if we, so let's try to do that. Let's see what happens. We, we might we might go a little off the rails here, but you know. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So if we wanted to create a, a point, so like I said, we're only allowed to have the one point inside of Rhino. So we need to create that point inside of, create the point that this circle is based on inside of Rhino. So I can, in the vector um, tab, there is a construct point command, um, which allows us to build a point. So you can see now, that I now have all of these default are probably zero. You can see when I hover over them, the Y coordinate, you know, there's a zero down there at the bottom, a zero, you know, so this basically puts a point at the origin, which is kind of probably, probably what we want. Um, so then if I plug this into the center, 
I should get a circle right around the uh, the um, uh, origin. So we can try. So let's see. I haven't used this this uh, array command, so this is going to be a learning curve for all of us. So where do we think this circle, this guy, needs to be plugged into in this? Geometry. Geometry. All right. So we plug it into geometry and you see now we have an array of circles. So how is it defining that? So it is going six. So you can see here it's going six wide on the X and it's going three on the Y. So if we wanted to change that, if we wanted to change how many circles were coming out of this, um, How would we how would we go about doing that? What well, we need to plug into these x and y's to to change that kind of dynamically? How many circles we wanted? Would it be the number thing? The number thing. Yeah. Um, the number slider. Yes. Um, so if I go to number slider here, I can get a a slider. If I double click on that slider, I can change what it actually. You know, I don't, I don't want a floating point, so I don't want decimals. I want integers. Um, so I can change it to integers. Let's just make it maximum 30 for now. We'll make it, you know, 15. And I can plug this into both of these and create a square of circles that I can then dynamically change. Um, so you can see you know, the spacing is different on the X axis than it is on the Y axis. It's creating a, uh, you know, a rectangle rather than a square. Um, and here, rectangular array cell one locally defined. So the question is, I'm not exactly sure what we would need to plug into that in order to create, to change that. Um, what happens if I plug that in? Nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's looking for. I'm not sure what that's looking for. Uh, let me see if I can figure that out quickly. Um, like I said, we may be going off the rails here. So, uh, but you know, I imagined going at this another way, but we'll go at it the way you all might attack it. Um, Trying to see what needs to go in there. Oh, a rectangle needs to go in there. So rectangle, interesting. Uh, okay, so maybe, so it looks like that cell is actually looking for a rectangle, which is like, I assume, which I assume is what this rectangle is here. It's defining how this is uh, multiplying out. So maybe what we need, well, so it seems like what we might need to plug in there is another, is a rectangle that is the shape that we want it to be. So if I come here and I pick, I have a rectangle, I'm just gonna copy this slider here. I'm gonna make a square. So you can see this is a, another square here. It's showing the plane. That's what this, um, it's showing the plane that it's sitting on. So if I plug this in, boop, you now see that I have a square um, that replicates out and I can change the spacing of that square by changing this, um, this slider here. So yeah, there we go. So now we can change those dynamically if we wanted to. I'm just going to turn off the preview of some of these things so we don't get too confused. All right, so now we have our circles. So how might we, so the first thing we, I guess one of the first things we need to potentially do is figure out how to change the radii, the radii of these circles. So how would we, how, oh, I just realized how this is gonna fall apart, but we'll, we'll get there and, and, and we'll all see it happen together. Um, so how do we change the radii of the circles that are here? You would have to plug something into the radius from the circle. 
the radius, this one right here, this radius? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's, let's create another number slider. I'm gonna leave this one a uh, floating integer, plug this in, and now you'll see I can change, uh, change this uh, to three. So we have, oops, um, you can see I can change these radii now um, and make them as wide as I want. So, the, so what do we think the problem might be uh, that, that's going to arise? Because we, we want to be able, because the next step is how do we change the radii based on the distance to this point? Does anybody see what the problem might be? We can add a function, like a math function, that divides the, because we want, we want a grid of circles and they're all touching, right? Not necessarily touching. We want, I want, what I want to happen is I have, a, I have this point here and I want, if this, let's say this point was right here, I want the circles to change their radius based on how close they are, but they are to this point, uh, right? So okay. in, if the point was here, then this circle would be the largest. These two would be the next largest, you know, and it would radiate out. And then this one, this one here would probably be the smallest, maybe this one too. So gotcha. based on the distance from that point to the, to these circles. You have to add something to the attractor point. Add something to the attractor point. What I well, okay. What do, what were you thinking? Well, if it's the attractor point that is going to make them change in size, then maybe there's another box that needs to be added to the attractor point. So or, something. Or, go ahead. Sorry. I guess I guess that it would be wrong. I guess we need to attach to be. It would need to be attached to the rest of the circles. So, so yeah. So, what we what we need to do, potentially, is the first. You know, what I think maybe you're not. You're like going in the sort of the right direction. We need to be able to measure, right? We need to figure out the first thing we need is a list of. We want to know how far this is away from all of these circles, right? So we need to be able to measure. We need a list of those dimensions. Like what's the dimension from this point to this circle, that point, to, you know, the charger point to this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, so what we need to do potentially next, like I said, we're, you know, I think there's gonna be a problem that's gonna arise, but we'll, we'll let it arise um, naturally and try to problem solve it. Um, is we need to, you know, next maybe measure these measure this point, measure from this point to the center of the circles so that we can get a list of all those dimensions. So there is a command inside of, I don't actually know, see if we can find it. I don't, like I said, I, I'm, I like to type things in, so. Uh, let me see here. Where would you be? You need a vector. Point. There we go. So in the vector uh, tab underneath point, there is a distance. Oops, there is a distance uh, command which computes the Euclidean distance between two points, two point coordinates. So if I if I drop this in, you can see that I what I can do is I can drop two. You know, I can put point a point point and or points into a and a point and or points into B, and it'll measure the distance from between those items. So the first point we might want to add to that is the attractor point. So now we have a point coming in um, and we want to be able to measure from uh, this point to all the other points. So how do we might, how might we do that? What, what do we think we need to plug into B here? Uh, 
The center of the circles. Center of the circles. That is correct. So then, but there's already something plugged into the center of this? Or is there a way to get to the center of the circle? So that that's kind of, uh, We that that so we went like I said we went a little bit a different direction so we have to figure out together because I don't even I don't know hundred percent I have to we'll have to find the right command here but we need to be able to grab the center of these circles because if I put if I plug this in I don't well maybe it will let's see what happens maybe it'll just work um, I didn't think it would but maybe it will so I'm gonna put a pan so I don't know what's coming out of this um, I don't know exactly what's being computed when I plugged. So this is the geom. So let me just go through what I just did. Um, so we have we have our st our start point. We're creating our start circle, right? And then we're arraying that circle using the array command. So we're plugging geometry in, and then it's being arrayed, you know, based on our number sliders here. Um, and I took the geom. So the geometry of those that array is being is coming out of here, right? So you can. There are two things you can get out of this um, out of this node. You can get the actual geometry that's created. So if I hover over this, you'll see it's listed circle, 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 circle with all the radii. And I can also get what was transformed, right? So the action that happened. So if I if I hover over that, you can see that the action is move, right? So it move it it starts with the circle that's at zero zero zero. And then it moved the first one in the x direction 11 because this is 11, right? So if I change that to 12, I come back to this transform, all of those say 12 now. So the first circle is at 12, the next one's 24, 36, 48, 60, blah, 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 all the way down. And you can see that it says that there are 81 circles. So if you counted up these circles, there, um, it did that 80, well, it did it 82 times. Um, because we started at zero in our lists. And uh, so there should be 82 circles. Um, so we don't want to try, go ahead, sorry. If you move the attractor point with the gumball, the mm -hmm. size of the, uh, or the distance of the circle is gonna change? The distance of the, so I don't or, know what's, so I gotta, so we plugged, we took the geometry, which is the circle, we plugged it into point B. We plugged the attractor into point A. I don't really, I don't 100% know. So I can, if I hover over this, you'll see that I'm getting values out. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bring a panel over. This is just a blank panel that that basically takes whatever's coming out of a node and plug it in here. And it looks like it worked. I didn't think it would, but it looks like it, it's calculating the way I want it to. So what this should be um, is uh all of the circles so it must it must define the circle by that center point and it's getting the distance between all of them so it's saying between circle zero so if i hovered over here circle zero is i can put another panel right here uh, do. so circle zero is oh actually i don't want to plug that i don't want to plug this in um is right here which is probably this circle at the starting point is this far away from the attractor point. The next one is this far away from the attractor point, da, 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 all the way down to the end. Um, so I think it actually might work, at least the first part of this might work. It's, there's still gonna be a, you know, potentially a problem that we'll have to solve. So that's, a, so I think so far so good. Um, so you can see this list that is pumping out those distances. So what do we need to do next? If we want, the circles to change their radius based on these numbers, because these are the distances, what, what would we need to do to get that to happen? What do we need to connect the, these numbers to? We're gonna have to add a node. We have to add multiple nodes.
So what we need to do is we need to be able to change the radii of these circles based on this number. So I, you know, the, the, the simplest version is I want to make the radius of this circle, which is zero. So this circle here is zero. I can't select it, but that is zero there. This is zero. I want to make its radius 45.241565. And I want to change all of these circles based on this number on these numbers. It's going to get real crazy because these they're all going to overlap each other, but we'll we'll look at how to fix that once once we get there. So what I need to do is I need to be able to change the radii of all the individual circles. And this is where the problem is going to come into play because the radii of all these circles, does anybody know how the radii of these of these circles is being decided right now? Like which what of these nodes currently on the screen. Um, you could even circle it or something with the, the uh, annotate tools. Which of these nodes is, is actually deciding the radius? That's the one we want to decide the radius. There, oh, someone got it. I think it was Gabrielle, I saw it real quick. Whoever circled the number slider here, this is what is creating is changing the radius of these circles because it's plugged into the radius that's starting that, that creates the first circle that we then arrayed, right? So the problem that that I saw that we're going to run it that we were going to run into is that I at the moment am unable to um, change the radius of an individual circle because they're all being controlled by this. Um, like I need, so when, where this is being controlled, right? So if I put a panel here, there's only one circle coming out of this, out of this node, right? So if I, you know, if I plug this in here, nothing's going to happen. It's broken. Um, if I click on here, it's recursive data stream. This com this component def depends on itself. So it's basically creating a circular loop um, that is causing a problem. So I will plug this back in. So we need to pass this point because this is where this is where all the circles get created. At this point, this all of the circles don't exist in this stream. Only one exists. The circles only exist after this one. So from here, what we need to do is get the radius of these circles. We need to get a list, you know, so this right here is a list, which is, this list is showing the, um, the distance between all the circles. So we need a list of all the, of, um, we either need a, actually, well, either we need a list or we need to scale, that might be the better option um scale this geometry out of here so let's try and do that so let's see that might be the workaround um i can show you how i had anticipated uh doing this after we after we complete this um do, 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 curve little one here display might be and vector. Mm, I don't know where the scale. I'm just going to type it in scale. So there's a scale command here. Um, so let's see if. So if I take. So the scale command requires geometry, um, a center point of the scaling and then the factor by which it's scaled. So does anybody know what we should plug into this geometry uh, wire or node? Have a thought? You can circle it if you want. Boom, Earl's got it. So we'll plug that in there, but you can see Something weird's going on. It's scaled, but it is scaling. Jeez, the sun. 
um, it is scaling from a the, over the wrong center, right? So you can see that it's basically scaling from this this point and it's scaling down, right? So this whole, um, all the circles are being scaled down to this point, which is not what we want at this point. We want them to scale, we want them to stay in this position and, uh, and scale kind of in that spot. Does anybody have an idea of what, what we might need to do to, uh, um, to get that to happen? You have to change the factor, the scale factor and the scale box. Scale factor in the scale box. So this, uh, yeah, the guy that says. Factor. Okay, yeah, there you go. So we need to define. Yes, we need to define the center um, of that circle, or we need to get the center point of all of these circles. Uh, so this is the thing I might. We have to. We're gonna have to work with here. I don't think there's a circle. I don't think there's a center. Actually, what we might be able to do. Um, is that in the area, so there's an area command. I don't know where that is up here. Let me see if I can find it up here. Uh, analysis, so yeah, in, in the surface, uh, in the surface analysis, uh, there's also a curve analysis of it. Uh, no. So I think it's a surface analysis. There is an area command. And inside of that area command, two things pop out. One is the area, the actual area of um, the object that you plug in. But the, the second thing that pop, pop, pops out is the centroid, which is the center of that area. So I don't know if this will work, but let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna plug in the geometry here. And if you hover over this, you'll see a bunch of areas. They should all be exactly the same because the um, they're all the same radius. And this should be a series of points, which looks correct. If I copy and paste this here and plug this in, I have a series of point, you know, def defined points, um, which should be the center of all of these circles. And actually you can see them pop up, right? So that there's these dots. So like uh, Gabriella suggested, I'm gonna plug this centroid. Let's zoom out here to see if it works. I'm going to hide, uh, turn off the preview and I'm going to turn off the, I'll leave that on for a second. And if I plug this into the center, ta-da, everything shifts back out. Um, and the circles are now back in the center of themselves, right? But they do are scaled down. And that's because this factor here, if you see is, is lo locally defined as 0 0.5. So that's basically saying, hey, this circle is scaling down by a half automatically. If you don't plug anything in here, it's going to scale down by, you know, a half. So does anybody have an idea of what we might want to plug into that factor? Because this, this might be one of the final steps. We, this, this could be the final step in scaling this the way we want it to. So what do we need to plug into this factor to get these circles to scale based on their distance from that uh, attractor point? You can draw it if you want. No ideas? Oh, there we go. Earl's got it. So Earl's saying, why do we put why are we plugging that in, Earl? And someone else drew on it too. I couldn't see who it was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, because that happened to me. <laughs> I was trying to figure it out, but yeah, so yeah. that is it, right? So that is taking these numbers, which are the distances, you plug that into the factor, and you can see that this is now the scale factor for all the various circles. So now if I move this point, all the circles are shifting based off of looks like some kind of crazy magnetic field or something. Um, based on their location, their, their relative. So you can see when I get really close to this circle, I am, uh, you know, if I get it right somewhere in here somewhere, you know, it's, I can almost get it exactly on top, but this is the smallest circle and then they grow as they come out. But it's a little ridiculous, right? 
this really isn't giving us anything useful. How might we get something useful out of this? How might we scale this? What, what could we change about this graph and about these numbers that gives us something a little more interesting? Any ideas? You can change the, their distance away from each other in the array so that they're more spread out and you can see them. We could do that. Um, how, what, what, uh, what might we scale or what, what might we do? Um, what, which one of these sliders or, or nodes would we move to get that to happen? You know, Gabriella. Oh, there you go. Yep. Gabriella got it. So if I uh, actually, yes, yeah, so I was wrong. Actually, no, I was wrong. Uh, the count. I thought that one was it too. So actually, it's probably it's this one here. My fault. So you can see that that, you know, something starts to happen there. I could, you know, I could up this slider. I can make it, you know, a thousand if I really wanted to. And, uh, but it's not really it's still kind of the same shape because they're basically all still the same relative distance. So the, the circles are just growing because the distances are growing. Um, and also you might want it to be, um, let me scale this down again. Um, you might want it to be a little more, you know, you might only have a, a surface that's, you know, 23 feet by 23 feet or something. So you need these all to kind of fall on the uh, on this plane, so it was good. It was a good thought, um, but I think we'll actually have to change something else. It's actually probably a little simpler. Well, not well, maybe not simpler, but anybody else have another a thought on how we might? Does anybody know what the what, you know? Everybody does everybody understand what the problem is? I guess. The, like the scale of things is too large. Scale you know, of things is too large. So. Yeah, well, we're basically taking the distance, which is a num, you know, 13 feet, 26 feet, excuse me, 70 feet, um, and we're making a rate, a circle rate. You know, our our plane is only 23 feet by 23 feet, or whatever it is, um, and also immediately any circle that's further away than 23 feet is off of the off, you know, off of the uh, the surface. So what we could do is use these numbers here as um, kind of like a percentage or a ratio, let's say. Um, and we could uh, decide, we could use them and we, or, we, or we could scale them in some way. We could basically say, take this number and do something to it to reduce it. But the ratio between them all will stay the same. Um, so something that we could do is we could do something very simple. We, in this maths, maths section, um, there are your typical math uh, operations, um, one of which could be division. Um, so I could take all of these numbers. You know, the first thing we might want to do is we could take all of these numbers. I can get a, an integer. So this is just a, a number. I can change, I can set, I, um, oops, I right clicked on that. I'm gonna set this integer. So let's just set it to one for a second. And I can take all of these numbers, plug this in he <clears throat> here, and ba basically make them the inverse of themselves, right? So if I plug this in now, it's gonna be a crazy, um, you know, a crazy small, uh, decimal because I'm just dividing you know, a one divided by these numbers. And then if I plug that factor in, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be way too small. So maybe one isn't the right number. Um, you know, you could set this to, you know, 20, maybe a little higher. Uh, let's do, oops. 
Oops, doing the wrong one, sorry. Set this to 50. And now we're getting, you know, a little closer to what we want. Um, you know, this is probably, you know, you in the, you know, this is kind of a, the brute force way to change it. Um, but this at least starts to get, you know, at the idea here. So now I can see I divided it by 100 and the circles are adjust. So let me actually turn on, let me turn off the preview of these circles so they aren't distracting. And you can see that they, um, whenever they get right, whenever you get right inside of there, it gets, they can get really extreme. Um, but you can see that they're changing based on, on the, uh, on that. Um, another thing we could do, you know, so you could keep, you could keep brute forcing this. Um, but you know, the problem that potentially might arise with that is if you scale this down, the scale doesn't really, you know, it's kind of interesting to watch it scale through, but, um, the scale doesn't, isn't relative to how far they are apart kind of, right? So like, it's basically a, a brute, a brute force option, it's not really changing relative to the um, surface. So if you made the surface 10 feet by 10 feet, and then as a test, and then you scale it up to 1000 feet by 1000 feet, it, you know, the scale wouldn't might not be the proportion that you want it to be. Um, so some other things you could potentially do um, is we could say something like, we could pick maybe a dimension that is um, the maximum dimension we want or something or the minimum dimension we want. And we can, you know, come up with a math equation that, um, that gets us to that option, you know? So, you know, we could say, oh, take the, you know, we could do some, some quick uh, sorting of this list and say, I want to get, you know, the most, the, the highest value in this list. And, um, and then I want that to be, you know, use that number and create a percentage of, of what the other ones are based off of that highest value and get a percentage. And then, you know, multiply that percentage by the maximum size, right? So uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do that quickly. Um, and it might be a little difficult to understand at the moment, but I could sort this list. So these are the distances coming out. I could sort this. I'm just gonna put a panel over here to see what's coming out. So a sort just sorts them from the lowest number to the highest number. Um, so that's the, that's the biggest value. So they're now kind of out of, uh, well, actually that's not gonna, not gonna work. Um, so if I wanted to get the, if I wanted to get a number in that list, I can, um, what I want to do, I want to list item. So I can get list item, but uh, so right now it's probably popping out the first item in the list. So you can see that it automat. This is we talked about this a little bit last class because I think Nick asked the question about how do I grab, how do I see what item in the list is the item I'm talking about, and I use this list item um, uh, tool to uh, think if I do that. Yeah. So I'm just gonna show you what I did there. So um, this list that comes into here, I can grab the index, which is the number, you know, the index, this, this column here is the index. So 9.267 is at the zero index. This index here, you can see is set to zero. So it's popping out that top digit. Um, if you zoom in really close to this, you can see I can add um, I can insert parameter. I can insert another um, uh, another another button. So if I add a plus sign to the top of the of the list, it goes to negative one, which is actually the last value. If I added a one down here, a plus one, it shows the next value. So you can see it says sixteen point three. That's sixteen point three four. But if I go to the negative, it it pops out the last one right there. So I can get my, you know, my last value um, of this list. And the reason I'm doing it this way, instead of just typing that number in is because this might change, you know, I want to be, I want this to be parametric. So as my, 
surface changes, it changes, you know, this changes with me. So if I change the size of the grid or, the, or um, these numbers start to change, I still want them to be, actually, why isn't that the last, that isn't the last value. Oh, no, it is. Oh, that's because I moved it. Um, so, uh, so I want this to, I want this to kind of all work together, right? So I'm going to grab that value. Um, so what were they, what were, so I want to take all of these numbers. So I want to add, so I want to get the percentage, right? So I want to get a, um, uh, I want to get the percentage of all of these. So I would take um, the negative one and I want to divide it by all of these. So that should give me basically the percent of these values. Actually, no, I, want to, I don't want to take this one. If I take this one, something bad will happen. Um, I reorganized this list. So if I were to pump this number back in, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go to the right circle. So I need to actually put in the list that I started with, which is here, into the, into, uh, into the B category there. Oops, oops, come on, there we go. So I can see, I can get, I got my kind of my percentages of this. <clears throat> uh, oh, I plugged it into the wrong one, my bad. This has to go into B and this has to go into A. Uh, what's, why is it not working the way I thought it was going to work? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's not operating the way I thought it was going to operate. I might be, uh, not good at math on the fly, but, uh, not sure this divided by. Hmm. Um, not 100% sure why that, why uh, I'm, I'm obviously miss, I'm not mathing correctly, but the idea being um, that I can basically take the data that I'm getting, the inputs that I'm getting, and I can process them in a way. So if I took this now and plug this in, I would get something different. Um, you know, they're still kind of relative to the their actual sizes, but it's not a, a direct one to one. I could potentially say that um, I want I want to kind of I could add another another uh, that's all I wanted. Sorry, um, another set of math uh, in order to kind of say okay, I want my I want a max size of something and I'm going to multiply or I want a size and I'm going to multiply it by these numbers um, to kind of get a different, so you can kind of process the data, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Um, you don't have to get this complicated for your stuff on, um, on Monday, but the idea is that, you know, you will eventually start getting data that you have to figure out how to process. And if you, um, you can't, sometimes the data is, you know, the numbers are too large or, you know, you need to take it, you know, for example, um, I know that Michael didn't, he didn't know, and I don't know either, um, how they were, how IBM was processing the information for that wall. Uh, but they, you know, they didn't just take the numbers and plug them in and make a, a circle that was five, inches wide you know they had to process it in some way um so the the idea being that um you might need to adjust the data as you uh as it comes in and, and make it you know kind of architectural scale and change the scale of those things um so any any questions or thoughts on that? I can I can show you all briefly how I imagined um, another way to do this exactly the same or similar. Um, it, it it maybe reduces this script a little, 
Um, but if anybody had any questions on the, at the, on the outset. Save this. Um, I can show you my the way I had imagined it. So let me try a new one. So you can see that everything went away as I closed it out because there's nothing, there's no script running anymore. I still have my one point. Um, I could, you know, if I open that file back up, everything pops back in because it's just a script. Um, you know, it's just telling uh, Rhino to do something. And when it opens back up, as long as this point still exists, it'll be fine. If I were to delete that point and recreate it, then we'd have problems. I'd have to come back in and make sure I attached my attractor point again to a, to a point that existed in Rhino. Um, so let me new document. So how I imagined doing it, similarly, we would create a point. I would um, set, set my point here. I'd have that. So this is my attractor point um, here. And then I, similarly, you know, you wanted, we want to create a circle from the center circles, you know, center here. Um, but what I imagine doing, um, cause I imagine this becoming a surface at some point, uh, was first, oops, first I might create a stop, go away. Uh, a surface. So I come into surface. Um, I can get a plane surface. I can create a number slider so I can adjust the size of that. Um, change it to an integer. Let's make this maximum 100. Okay. Boop, boop. So now I have a surface that scales. I can then um, get points that are on this surface. Uh, so in do, 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 analysis is analysis. Utility, I think it's utility. I can divide the surface. I can generate a grid of UV points on a surface. Um, so if I plug this surface into here, I get automatically a series of points. Um, does anybody know what UV is? I think we talked about it briefly or what a, you know, what that, yeah, does anybody know what UVs are? Or they come up with material sometimes, UV maps. Nobody? So UV is similar to XY, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, the difference is that UV is related to a specific surface, right? So if I were to put a point at X, you know, you know, X equals 10 and Y equals 10, you know, it might end up out here, but that point might not fall on the surface that I'm drawing and I in calculating exactly where that where the all the points are on a surface um, is uh, you know might not be the the most effective method to you know finding every single one of those points is not is not very easy so UV is basically a grid that is overlaid on top of the surface and in, in U and V have a value from zero to one so u equals zero and v equals zero usually is a corner you know the, one of the very corners of a surface and then u equaling one and v equaling one is the opposite corner and then everything in between so u 0 0.5 and v 0 0.5 is the direct center of that surface um you know it's easier to see if i were to create um let me just, I uh, can maybe explain, it makes a little more sense if I 
show it on a curved surface here. Let me copy this back. Wait. Um, so I have two curves, two weird curves. If I um, go to my parameters, I can grab my curves here. So I can get a curve, I'm gonna copy this. I want both curves. Um, I'm going to set one curve there. I'm gonna set the other curve here. I'm gonna loft those two together inside of, um, actually I just grab them both in this one. So I'm gonna set both curves in this, um, the single one. I can loft them inside of uh, Grasshopper. So the surface doesn't actually exist. It is just lofted inside of um, Grasshopper. The benefit of doing this in Grasshopper is that now if I come in here and I change this, it, I, the loft updates automatically um, as I adjust it, even and then eventually when I'm happy with the shape, I could, uh, you know, I could bake this back into, into Rhino. But let's say I wanted to find a point on this surface. It's like each point has a, a U or has an X, a Y, and a Z, and it's hard to know. And, you know, X, Y, and Z exists in the outside universe or outside world, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily relate to these exact points on here. So if I were to run this point, this surface, oops, through the same uh, through the same button through the same tool, I can grab all of the points that are uniquely on that surface, right? So I don't have to calculate where each of these are in 3D space. I can just take this surface and then get all the points from it. This will be use, very useful at some point, I'm sure, in your projects when you create a surface that's not flat on the ground like the ones we're creating right now. And um, you need to find points on it to you know, create things. So if I really wanted to, I could create circles at all of these points and adjust them. There's other problems with that. We'll get into that you know, later. But um, that was just a little digression on what a UV, um, UVs are. So if I come back over here, I have my surface. I'm gonna turn off the preview of that. I have all my points now. So now I can get my circle from the center. Uh, I can then take my points, throw them in there. Um, so now this, this is something I wanted to share with everybody. So you'll see, I now have a circle at every single one of these points, but you notice that this you know, we have our, our wires here connecting the different panels or different nodes. You can see these wires are, you know, just a solid wire. And this one is dashed. Does anybody know why this one is dashed versus a solid like that one? The reason is that this if everything and anything I plug on in past this is going to have this dash dash line unless I do something to it. But the reason it's dashed is what it's telling me is that I am transferring um, like sets of data, like lists inside of lists. So that data coming through this is not just a single value or values in a, in a list of values. You can see here I have 000, and if I scroll down, I have 001. These are sets, these are lists inside of lists. So this wire is just telling me, hey, just so you know, and you can see that the index starts over again inside of each list. Um, so they start from zero. Basically what, that's, what this is doing is it's taking, you know, this row, for example, it might be in, is the first row of circles. This is this first zero, zero, zero. Then the second row is the next one and so on and so forth. Um, so what this, this dash line is telling me is that you have multiple lists and you actually see how that becomes a problem later on, not tonight, but you'll see how, how we have to manage that list eventually. So now I have all my circles. Um, I want to change the radius. So if I, you know, like we were doing before, if I plug this in, if I just plug a, um, a number slider into here, 
I can change them all together. But the benefit of doing it the way I just did it versus doing it the way we did it in our um, explanation is that now I'm controlling, I'm technically controlling them all individually, right? So because I have, I am basically creating all the points first and then creating a list of circles afterwards before we created the circle first, then the points or then the different ones. So now if I get the distance um, between, does anybody know what, what should I plug in? Obviously I should plug in the attractor. What do, what do I plug into this distance here to get the distance between all the points? Does anybody have an idea? Of what that is, you could draw it if you want. Is everybody asleep? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know where it has to be plugged in, or what has to be plugged into that, Earl? Not to throw you under the bus. I'm thinking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you are. It's not. You know, it's hard to. Uh, it's hard to, to know or whenever you're not actually doing it. But so what I wanted. What I want to do, just so you know, I want to calculate. Let me just pull this point over. I want to calculate the distance from this point to each of these individual x's. So where inside of all of this are these x's? being created. So which one of these nodes is creating that point, you know, inside of the circle? Here's the question that you need to answer. You can just take a guess. No wrong. There's oh, Gabriella circle to the point. Um, that actually, no, I actually, I wouldn't have said that would work, but I think it actually will work now. Um, let me see. Um, I would, oh, sorry, Amanda, you were drawing something and I moved. What were you saying, Amanda? Yeah, that's what I was thinking we would do. Um, is plug in the points here to the point there. I only learned tonight that this would also work plugging the circle in. So the first number is 8.04. So if I plug in this, oops, I shouldn't have deleted the panel. So both would have worked. So Gabriella and Amanda, you both were correct. Um, this is what I was thinking, the points, um, but that what the way uh, Gabriella showed it would, would seem to also would work. Um, so now, where do I need to plug this distance in to get the same what we were doing before? To get the circles to change their radius. A scale. So we don't have to do that this time. This, this script ends up differently. Um, so we don't need, be, I, I'm not sure if, I, if, so where I need to point, plug it in is I can just plug it into this radius and I get my craziness. Um, and I could do, uh, you know, I could, you know, do all my, um, see if I can just quickly get something uh, out of this. Um, Divide this by uh, set integer. Let's divide by two. Actually, let's divide it by like this here. Oh, we're getting something interesting now. Getting getting weird. Uh, let's get set it to oops. Set integer. Let's make it like five. Uh, one more, we'll do it to 15. Um, 
Well, now I'm actually backwards because I'm dividing it. Uh, so I'd have to flip them back around. So I actually went the opposite direction. But um, so if I flip these two, if I plug this one in here and this one in here, it goes the other way. So you can see how to kind of easily flip those two relationships just by how I plug this these two into here. Um, so the reason why I can get away in this one, Earl, by plugging directly into the radius is before, and the one we did, the one we started with, the one we did together, um, we created the circle first. And we said the radius of this circle is, is five. And then we took that circle and arrayed it. So we copied it. And then we said, well, then we said, oh, well, how do we change the radius after that? If we, if we change the, if we plug that number, I don't know if you remember, when we plug the distances back into this radius tool in the previous one, it errored out because it didn't, it couldn't put, you know, it couldn't take a hundred numbers and plug it into one thing. Because in, in the previous one, there was only one circle in, coming out of this node. But now in this one, all the circles are coming out of this node. So you can see that here is all of them and I can change all of them, all of the radiuses individually by plugging, you know, as long as I have a list of numbers that is equal to the amount of circles I'm creating. So you can see here, I have 196 values coming out. And if I hover over this, I also have 196 values. Um, as long as these lists are equal, I can um, plug the same, or they, well, they could be equal, they don't have to necessarily be equal. You would, we could, we'll see what happens when they're not equal later on in the semester. But um, basically, I can, I can put any number in there. I could put any list of 196 numbers in there. I could, I could have an Excel file that that pulls um, the wind speeds at a given location for the last 196 days, and as long as those are numbers. I could take those numbers and plug them in here and get circles based on that. Um, so this data, there's nothing, there's nothing special about it. You know, I could pull any, any amount of data as long as it's equal to the amount of things I have and change them, you know, um, and I can change them, right? So that's kind of what we're doing in our project. Right now, this is a brute force thing where basically everything lives here. There's no, there's no outside data. I could take sun angles, I could take, you know, like I said, tweets, I could take stock information. As long as I get the right amount and I have the right amount of things, I can start to change these things, um, use them to change each other. So that's, you know, because this has all the circles in it, I can plug the radius directly into there and change them all. Um, it's it's going to be, it's definitely going to take some time for you all to kind of grasp, especially the list thing. It's going to start even I, I have a tenuous grasp on it sometimes and I have to like kind of rethink through it. Um, but the uh, It'll become more and more hopefully more easy to understand over time as you start to manipulate them. <sighs> any uh, so any questions or concerns or just general fears. So for homework, what we want to do is pretty much the same thing, but like make them squares or something. Uh, yeah. So, uh, or is there any questions related to Grasshopper? If if not, I can I can stop recording, and I'll explain the homework in a second. All right, I'm gonna stop recording. Oh, well, there's a chat. We chatted. Let me see what the chat says. We can divide the distance factor by 10. Yeah, so that's kind of what we were doing. Um, just yeah, just so you guys, I can't see when I'm recording and I and I have you minimize. I can't see the chat, or I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, I don't notice it at least. Uh, so let me.